previous video, we created a registration form that inserted users into the database. The problem is, there was no validation. In this video, we're going to add some. Now you may already be using JavaScript form validation in your pages, and that's nice from a user experience point of view, but rule number one of web development is never trust client data. They could have JavaScript disabled or maybe intentionally sending your server bad data. Always validate your client data on the server. Now another rule of validation is be as accepting as you can afford to be. People around the world have different types of names, so if you ensure a name has length 3 or greater, you're excluding everybody with the last name Lee. Or if you accept only alphabetic characters, you're excluding the O'Reilly's and those with hyphenate names. Some people have two first names or two last names, so you should allow spaces. There are a few things more insulting than being told your name is invalid, so be as accepting as you can afford to be in your validation. This is especially true with email addresses. Now, there's no real easy way to validate them. The most accurate regular expression for testing emails is hundreds of characters, and even that is only accurate to the specification. In the real world, people can have email addresses that work that aren't technically valid according to the specification. The best way to test if an email address is really valid is to send an email to it, and if it bounces, then reject it. Now that's a lot of work, so it's generally only worth the effort if you absolutely need a working email address. So let's take a look at our code. Now I've already updated our code for our validation, and we're just going to go through the major steps that I used. So right here I've created an errors variable that is an array. Now we'll be using this to store the various validation errors that appear on our various pieces of data. So down here is where we actually check our data. So here we're first checking first name to make sure it's non-blank. So what I'm doing is I'm using the pregmatch function, which does a Perl compatible regular expression. Now the regular expression I'm using is just to make sure there's at least one non-white space character. Now your validations may vary and you can change this to suit your needs, but for me this is all that I want to validate. And I'm testing it on the post first name. Now if pregmatch returns zero, then we have an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the first name key of our errors variable to an error message. So I'm going to say please enter our first name. The last name is exactly the same. So we're doing the exact same check to make sure it's non-blank, except this time we're checking on the post last name and setting the key last name. Now the email is similar, except my regular expression has changed. I'm doing a fairly simple regular expression where I'm looking for at least one of any character, an at symbol, another set of at least one or more characters, then a literal dot, and then more characters. Now this should be valid enough, it's only really checking for the at and the dot, so anybody could really put in all sorts of things that could get around this, but like I said, I can afford to be pretty accepting in this application. So if it does not match that, we're entering a different validation error message. Finally, I'm checking for the password, and the regular expression I'm using is any character so long as there's at least six of them. So I am enforcing a password length on our password. So here I'm saying the password is invalid if it does not match our regular expression. Then we need to check for our password confirmation to make sure that it matches our normal password. So here what I'm doing is I'm testing to make sure that our string comparison between the password and the password confirmation is not equal to zero. Now if it's not equal to zero, that means that the two strings vary in some way. String comp will return zero if they are the same. So here I am going to put an error on the password confirmation saying that the passwords do not match. Now here's where we're getting back to our normal code. Instead of just going straight into our SQL query, we're going to check to make sure that count of errors is equal to zero. So if any one of these error keys were set, our count's going to be greater than zero. So if we have no errors, then we go ahead and try to insert in the database. And all of this code is the same, we're escaping our input and generating our SQL query and running it. And here we can see if we get no errors, then we get a successful login and redirect around. Now if there is an error, the main error we're going to see is if somebody inserts an email address that already exists. Since we put a unique modifier on our column, if you try to input two of the same email addresses, it will return an error. So here we're going to check against our MySQL error string for the words duplicate and email. 
And now if that matches, we're going to set the email error message to be email has already been used. Now down here, I've created a few helper functions for generating my markup. The first is form row class. Now this takes a key like first name, last name, or email, and if there's an error on it, we'll return the string form error row, a class name that I have set up for an error. If there's no error, it'll return an empty string. Another one I've created is error for, and it takes the same kind of key, and if there's an error on the key, it returns this little piece of markup that is a div with our class, and then the error message. Finally, I've created an h function, which is an alias for the HTML special characters function. So down in our code, let's take a look at how we've utilized these different functions. So in each of our table rows, here I've created a class attribute, and inside of that, I'm echoing the form row class for that field. So if there's an error on first name, we will get the class name form error row input into this TR. This allows us to colorize the text field or any other kind of indication that there's an error on that row. Then on the input, I've added a value. So if you have an error in your code when you submit the form, when the form is displayed back to you again, you don't want the form to be cleared out. So what you want to do is you want to add the value that was submitted into that field. But since we're displaying information that came from the client, we need to sanitize it by calling HTML special characters, or H as I've aliased it. I use H just because it's shorter and it's something that I use a lot, and you should use a lot, so make it convenient for you to use. Finally, directly after our input, I do echo and then error for the first name or whatever key I happen to be using. And here, if there is an error, it'll print out a div with the error message. Now each of my fields has pretty much the same thing going on, of course, with the keys changed to whatever field we're on. The only difference is I am not echoing out the password if there's an error. I generally don't like to pass passwords back to the client, I'd rather have them re-input it. Now it's a little bit inconvenient, but I want people to be sure of the password that they're putting in, so I don't put a value in the password or the password confirmation. So let's look in our database. We see that we have Jim and Nick in here with Jim and Nick at Carsonified.com. So first let's just try submitting the empty form. Here you can see that we now have our error classes applied and we have error messages printed below each of our inputs. So let's try it out and let's, you know, sign up Ryan for this. And so let me type in a password and let me put a non-matching password in here. And so we can see that the passwords do not match came across. Now, if I signed them up with matching passwords, all of these should go through and we can be logged in as Ryan. Now let's just test to see if the email validation works. So I'm gonna to try to register again. And since my email address is already in the database, we should get to the point where we're inserting, but there'll be a MySQL error because of my email address. So let's just type in a password. Oh, looks like I missed that. And there we go. We see that email has already been taken. Now using these techniques, you should be able to create a fully functional user registration form for your authentication system.